G'day everyone. Today I was wanting to talk about sewing. So historical sewing and uh, I guess medieval sewing. It is a little bit different to what you perhaps might be used to at home. Before we go down the road of too many hand sewing techniques, I thought I really should go back to the start and do a quick little video about the kind of things that I have in my own sewing kit to hand sew the garments that I do. My own background is that I used to be a, a pattern maker and cutter at a company called Arctis Limited in Exeter, United Kingdom. I don't know how they're going these days. I worked there many years ago, uh, but they used to do a lot of fairly heavy fabrics. So things like um, military and police were their sort of core business, but they also did a lot of other stuff. However, um, my pattern making skills and my cutting skills, I guess, sort of came through. I also did a degree of engineering and product design. So there's a little bit of an idea about, about sort of my background in this. You'll find that many um, medieval reenactment groups and some groups within the SCA, that is the Society of Creative Anarchism, and also even some LARP groups, have requirements around uh, what people's costumes can be made of. So there's what they call an authenticity guide. For anyone who's new to any particular group, or new to reenactment in general, I suggest getting hold of one of these because it's really important. The key point here is that um, these groups will expect you to have your, your, if you like, costumes or your impressions as they're known, made in a particular way out of particular fabrics. So things like um, polyester or polyester cotton are clearly not gonna work for sort of 10th century uh, Viking clothes. Alrighty. So, sewing kits, where to begin? <laughs> um, I think the first thing that I would suggest is a, a tape measure. Now here I've got a very basic one. These only cost a couple of dollars each um, and I, I think they're a really good place to start. You need to understand, I guess, sort of, um, how to use them and that is to say that uh, how these apply to your garments and the things that you're making um, and in my videos I'll talk about how I come up with my measurements and how much seam allowance that I leave on each side. These are really important considerations because if we don't leave enough seam allowance then the garments may end up not fitting regardless of how well they're made. With that I suggest a ruler. Now I have two uh, of these metal rulers. I've had these for donkey's years um, and they're really, really useful. So this one is obviously in centimeters and inches. So it, I guess it depends on you as to where you're from. Uh, my American and Canadian friends all obviously have uh, inches and, and so on. Well, I tend to work out of uh, centimeters and millimeters. Whilst on reenactment events, I tend to use, or well, I have with me, um, medieval type scissors. And these are my, my collection of medieval type scissors, and these are really important. They're very functional, they're very useful, uh, and I actually use this one in particular, these snips, quite a lot just in my day-to-day -day sewing. So I do a lot of sewing. Uh, I have three young growing children, so they're constantly sort of growing out of their costumes, and um, I tend to, to remake those as I go. Moreover, I tend to use a pair of professional sewing scissors. This is a one thing that I have, 
which I've actually invested any real money in. Uh, and I would probably say that I go through a pair of these, I don't know, maybe every year or so. Um, this particular pair, I think from memory, cost me about $40. They're titanium and they're proper dressmaking shears. They're really comfortable to hold, they're very easy to use, uh, and they're, they're really, really good. They're different in design and construction to your sort of general household scissors. So general household scissors tend to be weighted more evenly, whereas these scissors are weighted, the top blade is heavier and the bottom blade is angled slightly so that uh, it can cut fabric better. So these are designed for cutting fabric. Next thing I'll talk about is pins. I don't use pins very often and anyone who's familiar with my videos will know that. Um, I do use pins from time to time, um, but, but simply not very often. I, I, it's just the way, I guess, that I sort of learnt to sew. Um, I do regret it sometimes um, because I do think it's a little bit lazy not to use pins because um, it's very easy to get distracted, especially with children, and um, you can end up uh, making mistakes, which can take a while to, to sort out. On that, a stitch ripper, as they're sometimes known, or an unpicker, is a really useful tool. These cost around about a dollar or two each. I think I paid about three dollars for this wheel of pins. Um, I don't know, not very much for this. These needles were $2.50. You, you don't need to pay a lot of money here to set yourself up and set yourself up well. Stitch rippers can be really good because if you do make a mistake, it's, it's quite easy to undo the sewing and to um, go back, start again, and not get too sort of crazy or upset about it. A sewing awl is a really useful thing to have. And these can be used for things like buttonholes or eyelets or all sorts of different things like this. And we'll talk about those uh, and show its use as we get into some of those particular videos, probably in the next sort of week or two at most. Some kind of means to mark your fabric. Okay, now you can buy pattern chalk, it's actually not that expensive, and normally comes in three different colors so that you can um, contrast your fabric quite easily. You could also use children's chalk uh, or a normal sort of graphite pencil is quite acceptable to use. You'll find with uh, chalk, as in ordinary chalk, um, that it does tend to come off fairly well, easily. I would say, however, that it's gonna depend upon the type of fabric that you're actually working on. So if you're working on wool, then you may have different requirements around this than, let's say, uh, if you were you, you're working with, I don't know, silk or a fine linen or something like that. Lastly, let's talk about needles. Again, I have a nice set of uh, historical reproduction needles, and these, along with it all, came from a company called Make Your Own Medieval. These guys are really good. They're in uh, Queensland, Australia, and I actually spent a fair bit of money with these guys. They, they do all sorts of different things, and they really do have a lot of subject knowledge. So really, really... Um, very enthusiastic to work with these guys and I, I really do sort of appreciate their expertise from time to time. However, day to day I tend to use commercial hand sewing needles and what you'll find if you get a packet is that you have a selection of different needles. And these are all actually um, tapestry needles. But you'll find you need a selection of different sort of needles depending on what it is that you're working on. So for instance, again, if you're working on a wool, then you may simply just want to have a fairly thick um, hand sewing needle. Whereas if you are working on, let's say, um, leather, you may want a blunt needle. And if you're going to be working on something like silk or fine linen, then you're going to want a much smaller needle, which is much more delicate, according to the fabric. A 
couple of other points that I'll just raise here quickly is that I find, and again, I'd like to know what your sort of experience is with this, but um, it's, it's worth being very patient with yourself when you're learning this kind of craft. Um, it's worth just giving yourself a bit of time to get used to it and just to sort of understand what it is you're doing. This is my basic set. Um, I think this works really well for me. Um, and this, to be honest with you, is, is what I use most of the time. Um, there are a few other things that I do have, which I'll just quickly grab. And they include things like, um, oops, beeswax, which I use with leatherwork and some other things like that. Um, and different types of threads. So for instance, um, I use a waxed linen thread when I'm doing leather work, um, but all of my leather tools and my leather stuff is, is on a different playlist. So by all means, if you're interested in leather work, then uh, go and check those out. There's some really good information there. Alrighty guys, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Uh, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll catch you in my next video.